Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Today we're going to be going over another unique item, uh, which is for the Sorceress. This one is called the Iceheart Bryce. The Iceheart Bryce has gone over quite a few changes over various patches, and this is the patch 1.50 version. And it's definitely gotten some interesting changes, that's for sure. So we're going to have to take a look at this together. So first off, it does have a pretty nice amount of life on it. Of course, mine has the Greater Affix roll, so it goes up to 2,141 with a Greater Affix, which is really nice. Uh, it also includes one of the temper affixes uh, which is basically where you can get 75% or up to 75% uh, frost nova size and the interesting thing about this is that um, with master working you can easily get up to 100 which is the cap so you can easily cap out your frost nova size with this uh, to get your maximum benefit and uh, Mr. Nemo is deciding to be a helicopter today um it also has a massive amount of cold resistance on there. I'm not exactly sure why they threw that on there, because quite honestly, I feel like the Sorceress, at least out of a lot of classes, has basically no issue with cold resistance. I actually would like to see that replaced with maximum cold resistance, maybe, if they really wanted to go that route. Maybe like 10 to 15% maximum cold resistance, just to really kind of like nail down the fact that this is an ice armor. Because the cold resistance itself is basically useless. Um, it also has another effect on here, which is 6% or 4 to 6% damage to Shatter's Echo. And of course, this can be greater affixed, and it can also be masterworked, uh, as well as some other things. So you can definitely get that uh, a lot higher. Now, what does that actually do? Well, if we go to the um, skill tree and you go down to Shatter, you'll see that it says after freeze expires, enemies explode for 45% of the damage that you dealt to them while they were frozen. Um, so you dish out a large amount of damage to them, and they dish out 45% of that damage back in an explosion, uh, which does a pretty decent amount of damage. Now this is going to give you an extra 6%, which is going to bring that up to 51%. Um, and of course you can masterwork it, you can get a greater affix, and by the time you're done, you could add a pretty considerable amount of damage to the shatter aspect through the way that this works. Uh, definitely adding in a large amount of additional damage through the frozen thing. Now the only problem with shatter is that shatter doesn't really give you very good damage against bosses. Um, I do believe it works on them when they're staggered, which is really nice. But for the most part, like, it's not really the most amazing thing against bosses when they're not staggered. So that's kind of an issue. Um, we also have the added effect of it, which is enemies that die while frozen have a 21 to 40% chance to unleash a Frost Nova. Now, of course, Frost Nova is the sorceress ability that basically just freezes everything around you for three seconds. Um, and, of course, you can add bonuses. Like, for instance, you can killing enemies... Um, Frozen by Frost Nova reduces its cooldown, uh, so you can get it to obviously have a much faster cooldown. Or you can go the direction of Frost Nova gain, grants 3% dodge chance per enemy hit, up to 15% dodging, uh, restores mana. Or you can go the other direction, which is it makes enemies vulnerable. Um, so in general, you can get some pretty crazy effects by having like tons of Frost Novas coming out. And again, this is something that works very effectively versus a... A uh, pack of monsters, but not necessarily a boss. Anything that can be frozen, it's going to be amazing against. And for the most part, you'll just walk through most dungeons, as most of the monsters are just completely and utterly encased in ice. And um, <laughs> as for the bosses, on the other hand, you're not really going to get any benefit unless they're obviously, you know, like... Uh, staggered, which is unfortunate. It does have its own uh, flavor text here, which is the mad artisan saw his fingers turn black from frostbite as he worked the cloth, but refused to stay the needle and thread for even a moment. Uh, it's basically, just, I don't even know why you'd wear them when your wiener fall off. Like, well, it's a sorceress. She doesn't have a wiener, but or maybe she does. Uh, look at her there. I do do what? what? No, I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> Uh, this one is rather interesting, and I've used it on quite a few occasions in the previous iterations, and it would be kind of fun to test out that shatter damage. I'd really like to get my hands on a greater affix one with the shatter damage echo and test it out with a shatter to see just how effective the additional explosion damage is. I feel like that on its own could be really interesting in terms of damage output for an item like this. Obviously, the ability to freeze everything around you and keep everything frozen 
is certainly not terrible. And all you have to do is freeze them, and then when they die, there's a 40% chance they unleash a Frost Nova, which is going to have a huge size. It's going to hit lots of monsters. And then, of course, those monsters, when they get hit by the Nova, they're going to freeze. You're attacking them while they're frozen. When they die, they're going to explode. It's all a really nice chain effect, and that's one of the things I think you'll find out that's really cool is that... Um, like, it really kind of functions as this, like, domino effect kind of, like, item where you get all these additional freezes and, and things going on that just make it just kind of insane. And maybe I can show this off. I mean, uh, let's let's see. I guess I'll have to throw Frost Nova on here. Um, and, of course, we'll have to go out and kill something. You can't test it on the training dummies because they don't die. Um, and this is an effect that specifically has to do with monsters dying. So we need the monsters to fall over and uh, while they're frozen. So we're gonna go. We're gonna use the frost nova to freeze them first, and then we're gonna kill them. And hopefully they'll all nice and explode with some more frost novas, which is exactly how you want things to happen, right? So you frost nova them, and then you kill them while they're in the frost nova, and they can potentially uh, make even more frost novas. Do we, we need to put the pants on? Right? Okay. Let's just double check here. So we're going to go ahead and freeze him. Uh, not enough freeziness. I need more freeziness. Of course, if you're set up for a build that has tons and tons of chilling and freezing and all sorts of other things, you don't really have to worry about this all much because it's going to like pretty much just happen by default. Um, but as you can see, like, tons of ice damage just, like, popping out and freezing damage popping out whenever I kill the monsters. Definitely effective, but I think it's much more effective if you can natively freeze the monsters with your other spells. And then add in, of course, the fact that every time you kill the monsters while they're frozen, you're getting more Frost Novas, which just feeds into it and makes it even more powerful. Uh, I think the real meat and potatoes of this is that Shatter Damage Echo, though, uh, because honestly, the Shatter Damage Echo is going to make it your, your Shatter Aspect even more powerful. Um, on top of this, if I remember correctly, there is an aspect also that affects the Shatter Passive. Um, which is going to multiply the damage of this. Let's, uh, let's just double check this real quick. So we're going to go shatter. And uh, do, do, do. Yes, explosions from the shatter key passive deal 45% times increased damage. Um, so, of course, this aspect is probably going to enhance the 6% bonus shadow damage that your shatter damage you're getting here. So, they're going to they're gonna feed into each other basically because this is going to increase the base by 6%, and this is going to multiply basically whatever the base is, which is definitely going to help in terms of damage output. Um, it's not my personal favorite, though, because, like I said, it doesn't really work on bosses, which does make the Shatter Key Passive less effective when you're bossing. But I gotta admit, um, when I set up my Pure Ice Sorceress, I was very, very impressed with the uh, Pure Ice Sorceress in terms of just how well she could control the battlefield, how uh, difficult it was for the monsters to even touch me, because they were all frozen, and I just laughed and as they all just, like, died from Frostbite, which was pretty pretty darn hilarious um this particular uh pair of pants i'm pretty sure did i already look it up uh, a little second ago no i did not so if you go to diablo4.life we do have a target farming tool uh which is really easy to use and you basically just click on sorky sark and then you would go to ice hard prize it actually drops from gregore and lord zir a lot so if you do those you're going to get it a lot i've actually went to uh, lord zir many times to farm temerity pants uh, which is definitely something that you could be interested in for barrier builds and uh, ended up with like 60 pairs of Ice Hard Rise. So if you're trying to get your hands on Ice Hard Rise, Lord Zier is definitely the place to go because he's going to give you like a thousand pairs of them while you're trying to get your temerities. Um, I don't really recommend these for like endgame sorceresses though. Like I have to say that um, they usually end up in my stash. Uh, they might not with that new 6% shatter damage, so we'll have to see. But the the main problem with them is, is they're not very good for bossing, and the sorceress just has a lot of issues with bossing. So they end up being kind of like shelved because of it. But they are very fun to use in like hell tides, regular content, like killing regular monsters. In fact, you know, if you had them like in your inventory and you just swapped them in while you were doing the regular monsters and then swapped in your other pants while you were doing the bossing, that could be kind of interesting as well. But um, 
unfortunately, some of the content in the game doesn't allow you to swap equipment, like the pit, for instance. So that's usually not going to be very helpful in terms of that. Um, he's got a bunch of little tufts of fur sticking out of his butt because the two chinchis have been fighting each other. I don't know why you're always fighting each other. You're always fighting. Fight, 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 fight. They fight each other. And one of them's got a hole in his ear because the other one, I guess, bit him on the ear or whatever. It's rude. They're so rude to each other. <laughs> Sometimes they're very nice to each other, though. You see them sleeping in a little pile and giving each other nibbles. And, and I guess other days, maybe they're just grumpy with each other and they just, you know, then, then have nothing better to do other than to fight. Hmm. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and guys watching my videos. Sorry, I got a little distracted by my chinchilla. And um, if you enjoy the content, be, be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and uh, obviously my pocketbook as well. And uh, as always, keep watching.